it's Christy with another episode of Laugh or Cry. Uh, hopefully you'll laugh, maybe you'll cry, we don't know. I'm going to start off with some articles I've found on TMZ, which i got to tell you, as news goes, they, I know, oh, well, it's just fake news, da, da, da. but this, they actually break stuff first, and then they end up usually being very accurate in everything they report, oddly enough, like I said, with it being a gossip rag. But this kind of shocks me a little bit because this couple lives or lived in Nashville, where I'm living right now. AEW stars CJ Perry and Miro, their relationship's over after seven plus years of marriage. You may not know those names, but you do know them by Lana and Rusev. They were WWE wrestlers, now they're with a AEW. Well, you know, they got um, married, like, obviously seven plus years ago, and, ah, uh, this isn't part of the storyline. They are calling it quits. Uh, TMZ Sports learned of the famous, now former couple, who also play a married couple in the ring, broke up once and for all in the winter of 2023. And evidently they'd been on again, off again for a while. But I know that they had a house here in Nashville, and they were calling Nashville home. So that's kind of sad to me. The couples did their I do's in July of 2023. 2016 and they've been dating for years and it kind of had to come out because i i love wrestling i love wrestling half naked men rolling around on the floor sweaty who wouldn't love that but in this uh they evidently posted a picture on instagram of i guess them in bed and she held up the ring like oh we're engaged evidently wwe did not like that because that was like you're spoiling stories. You're like, oh, you're not supposed to be together. Now we're going to have to make you be together. Blah, 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 blah. Anyway, it was great. Uh, evidently, Lana confirmed the split. Uh, CJ. Mir- uh, she says, Miro and I made the difficult decision to separate after many wonderful years together and have decided to move on as friends and hopefully on-screen characters somewhere down the road. Oh. As for what went wrong, evidently there wasn't any fighting, there wasn't any cheating, they just grew apart, so it says. Uh, TMZ was told that Perry and Miro, Rusev and Lana, want to remain friends and plan on working together in the future, so that's kind of cool. Which, I guess, AEW, which is all elite wrestling, is happy to hear about that, that both of them are still going to be working, which I have not seen them, I I just don't watch AEW enough. So uh, I'm so excited to see what all that's about. So both of them have been on AEW, TNT, and WWE. And they were photographed together in public in late 2022. And it's been a couple of months since they've wrestled together on TV. But neither one of them have filed for divorce yet. But Rusev, i.e. Miro, has moved back to Bulgaria shortly after they called it quits. Oh, Rusev has left the building. Now on to more wrestling news, kind of. Uh, I didn't watch the Oscars, uh, but evidently John Cena was very well seen on the Oscars because he was not completely naked, but just about. I'm seeing pictures of uh, a patch that's covering up his twig and berries and his man crack in the back. So, uh, but it's like nude colored. So it looks like he's naked when you see him running around with like a, I guess an envelope that's supposed to be covering up his junk and a curtain or something that's, oh yeah, that does look like a curtain covering up his junk. He stripped down to practically nothing to pull off a streaker bit on the Oscars. But we know now how much skin he was really showing that it was actually all covered up. Hmm, Cena fake. I can't imagine that. Wrestler turned actor took to the Dolby Theater stage in Hollywood in nothing but a new colored modesty wear to make it appear that he was really naked at the Oscars. In other words, his his junk and butt were covered up. Uh, the photos are hilarious, though. I just don't like him. I don't know what it is about him. I just don't like him. I didn't like him when he was in wrestling. I don't like him as an actor. He's funny. I'll give him that. I will give him that. That makes him tolerable to me is that he's actually funny but he's in everything he doesn't need to be in everything he needs to stop put some other people on it's like i hear him even if i don't see him i'm hearing him in commercials and it's driving me absolutely crazy 
I just, I did watch this show, uh, what was it called? Total Divas, which is like a, a reality show about all the, some of the female wrestlers. And he just came across as a, I know he was with the, uh, one of the Bella twins. The one to me that reminds me of an Airedale dog. She's just, even though she's got a twin, the other twin is just prettier. She's pretty, fine, sure, whatever, but she just looks like a dumb dog. I can't take her, and her voice is like fingernails going down a chalkboard. And so that might be one of the reasons I didn't like him, because I just don't like her at all. At all, 100%. And evidently they were together forever, and she wanted a baby, and he didn't, blah, 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 blah. And he was very, he's a very clean freak, according to that show. I mean, he, it's like, take your shoes off when you walk, which I'm that way too. I don't know what you've been walking in. I don't want you dragging it into my house. Totally get you on that one, Cena. But, ah, I don't know. He just seems aloof, which I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I don't get it. But whatever. He, he started out, I guess, on one of those uh, contest shows to get into wrestling. And uh, I saw in an interview, which this kind of makes me like him a little bit. He was talking about where the whole you can't see me thing comes from is, which is, this is another reason I don't like him is because his whole image is like military saluting, but he was never in the military. So he's always wearing like those 1992 jorts and uh, a shirt. But when he does that can't see me thing, it was, I guess, one of his brothers or one of his relatives kind of dared him to do it or, or something. So he did it on live TV and it stuck which I think is hilarious. I thought it was stupid, but now I, I find it. Okay, that's a little funny. All right, I like I like a little backstory that has you having some balls. He was shushing a few people from behind the scenes that were raw because <laughs> he was rocking uh, some Birkenstock sandals, which I'll give him some credit for that. Those are comfortable. And uh, he's no stranger to performing in little to nothing because, you know, he wrestled at the WWE forever. Uh, he did... <laughs> As for how he pulled off his on-stage quick change uh, to present the best costume design category, video shows several Oscar production assistants draping John in fabric as the nominee montage played. Uh, may have to go back and watch that then. I get, uh, I'm curious. I'd rather see Dwayne Johnson naked, though. Or partially naked. I just like... Dwayne's a good-looking man. The Rock. Yes, he is. Uh, let me see. Yeah, uh, yeah, all the nominees, blah, 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 blah. Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer, Oppenheimer. That won everything. And then, uh, what's the other movie? Poor Things or something like that. Blah, 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 blah. It seems that the only thing Barbie won, which I saw, I loved Barbie. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. It won Best Song for, um, God, I can't, let me see if I can find the name of it. Not I'm Just Kin, which is still a hilarious, hilarious song. But it was like, What Was I Made For by uh, Billie Eilish. That one best original song in a film. It's a good yay for that. So at least they won one thing. They were nominated for a ton of stuff. So it was Oppenheimer. And it seems like Oppenheimer and Poor Things cleaned up. Booyah, that's fine. And I did go back and I watched Ryan Gosling doing this uh the live version of i'm just ken <sighs> ryan gosling ryan reynolds two canadian men gorgeous i can't get enough of them they are awesome ken he couldn't have been a better ken and ryan gosling not only good looking great actor he's actually really singing he's actually really a good singer and it's just fantastic to see him play along with it and just, he makes it fun. He makes everything fun. He, and he's married to Ava Mendez, which you've seen her in everything. She was in um, uh, The Other Guys with Will Ferrell. She was in Stuck On You, Stuck With You uh, with uh, Matt Damon. Yeah, he's She's gorgeous and funny, so I totally get their connection. Slash rocked out on stage doing a solo, so it was awesome. I didn't understand the cowboy hats, but I don't know. I guess they did have the horse thing going on in the movie, so maybe that was it. But I thought it was adorable. So I'm glad I went back to look that up. That was really cute. I don't know where I was going with the uh, John, C ah, John Cena. That's right. So his 
ex, Nikki Garcia, that's the Bella twin, uh, da, 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 she felt about the bit. Uh, she was also in the audience, uh, in attendance working the Oscar red carpet. Ooh, that's weird. Okay. I don't know. She, again, if you ever look at her, she looks like a dumb dog and not in a good way. I don't know. Matthew Perry. He's back in the news. He is in his will. He's leaving over a million dollars to a trust named after Woody Allen. Hmm. That's interesting. It says his will's leaving his stuff in a trust established, uh, that, he established, that he established that's named after a famous Woody Allen character. Uh, legal uh, documents obtained by TMZ. He created the will in 2009, says he wanted to leave a majority of his belongings to the trust. And as it turns out, I guess he was a fan of Annie Hall because he named it Alfie Singer Living Trust. Aww. So it's basically comprised of the money and assets he had on hand before he died. Now, this isn't all of his stuff. But just a million, you know, a million dollars worth of stuff that's just lying around, as one does, right? But the rest of his stuff, the bulk of his stuff, he's he's probably got millions upon millions, so that's just one million of all his millions. So, we don't know who the trustees are. Uh, but let me see. Uh, Matt makes a distinction that his will that have any kids he may have post 2009 are explicitly not entitled to his fortune. What? He never had any kids, though. So I don't know what that's all about. Two women named Lisa Ferguson and Robin Rusin, uh, Robin, who's uh, Mike Myers' ex-wife, are listed as executors of his will. That's interesting. I don't know the connection there, but interesting. Uh, they'll be the ones in charge of making the decision of how they're going to divide up the money. Robin and Matt... Okay, here's it. They worked on the same game show called Celebrity Liar. Oh, back in the 2010s, she was a executive producer and he was a contestant. Well, then there's the connection right there. Oh, uh, let me see. It says, you know, he died back in October, drowning in his pool. An autopsy determined he had ketamine in his system. But, you know, he had ketamine because of his mental thing. I don't think that's why he died. I think he had a heart attack. But don't hold me to that. But I'm pretty confident it was a heart attack, not necessarily drugs. But anyway. And then what else is going on? So, I have no problem flying. I get the nerves. So I might have to have a few rum and cokes when I fly. Just, you know. You know, you never know. And now I've got reason why. United Airlines. A tire flew off a Boeing jet and smashed into cars. There's a picture of it falling off the plane as it is in midair. And it like smacked down in San Francisco it, uh, on a flight that took off on Thursday. Oh my God. Immediately, almost immediately, it lost one of its tires, which came crashing down on parked cars in the uh, San Francisco airport. Oh my God. Uh, hopefully nobody was injured in that. Hold on. It was bound for Japan. With 249 passengers on board. Uh, oh my god. Yeah, I'd be like, um, yeah, you're gonna have to let me off right now. I don't think I want to ride across water with this on. Okay, nobody was injured on the ground. But there was definitely damage to the vehicles. I can only imagine. As for the plane, United says it landed safely at LAX. Mainly because it's a 777, 777 which has six tires on each of its two landing gear struts. It's designed to land safely with missing or damaged tires. Wow! So they plan for them to have no tire. That's not frightening. I know it's a safety procedure, but that is still freaking frightening. Once on the ground, United moved all the passengers to a new aircraft with, uh, I guess, all their tires, and it left for Osaka Thursday evening. What? Oh, that's very, very scary. Uh, it says a uh, door blew off a Boeing 737 operated by Alaska Airlines two months ago, leading to a temporary gr uh, grounding of all the 737 MAX 9s. A door came off. A tire came off. Boeing, get your shit together. I've got a friend that works for Boeing, and well, that, that tells me all I need to know. They shouldn't have him. 
I mean, bless his heart, he's just IT, but they shouldn't have him. Some ex-Boeing's employees have come forward claiming the, co the company's been cutting corners. Uh, you think? Safety-wise, and its manufacturing plants, with one former quality manager telling TMZ Live that he wouldn't put his own family on a 737 MAX 9. The fuck? That's super mega frightening. And as if that's not enough. Today, uh, a Boeing 787. Passengers were flung through the air with a sudden drop injuries. It was a flight from Australia to New Zealand. And there was a bunch of people being tossed around the cabin after a technical problem caused the plane to do a brief nosedive, leaving people injured. What? What? One uh, one passenger uh, was doubled over in pain, uh, attended to others while another's clutching the head. And, uh, oh my god, it just, it the picture looks terrible. It sounds awful. Uh, looking around, wide-eyed, scared, not knowing what the heck's going on or if it was going to happen again. My gosh, one po uh, passenger said that some folks were strapped into their seatbelts at the time of the drop, while another CNN said that some of the people were tossed around so vigorously that the plane ceiling ended up with blood on it. Oh, my God. It's called uh, the Latam Airlines, L-A-T-A-M. My goodness. So, despite all that, which ended up uh, stopping in New Zealand before heading for its final destination of Chile. Oh, my fucking balls. So, it wasn't even going to New Zealand totally. It was going to Chile. Again, over huge amounts of water. It managed to laugh, uh, land safely in Auckland uh, as planned. So I guess it was going to New Zealand, then going to Chile. Yikes. They didn't elaborate on the technical issue or what it was, just saying that the situation had some of the crews and passengers, you know, affected. Ooh, I believe so. Roughly 50 passengers were treated at the airport for mild and moderate injuries, uh, but no one was in serious condition. Holy fuck balls. What in the blue hell? Tires coming off. Doors coming off. Now, like, you're getting thrown around like a little ball. Oh, that's... Oh, crap. Something happened here in Nashville, I'm seeing. On the 5th. A lot of crap happened on the 5th, it seems. A plane turns into a fireball, killing five people. Fuck balls. So... The plane turned into fireball after it crashed near a busy Tennessee highway Monday, killing five people aboard as a terrifying scene was captured on video. Oh, my God. So the small uh, small aircraft was flying from Kentucky to Nashville. No no water, it seems. Uh, last ev uh, that, that evening, when the pilot made a radio call to a new nearby control tower, wanting to do an emergency landing after a single engine had failed and all the power had gone down. Ha. Oh. Yeah, okay, that makes me want to go out on a plane. That what four stories now I've heard of terrible. Air traffic controllers gave the go-ahead for the plane to land on runway two at the John C. Toon Airport in Nashville. Okay, where in Kentucky were they that they were able to go over Nashville to go to Knoxville area? That's scary if that's what I'm reading correctly. To, oh, it was going to Nashville. Okay, okay, going to Nashville. Uh, mm, mm, mm. So it was. F they were uh, filmed by the highway security cameras. Yikes! The jet cuts across the packed interstate, exploding in, fa in flames behind a Costco, as one does. The pilot and four passengers, oh no, were killed instantly. The Nashville Fire Department trucks raced to the scene, Put out the flames with uh, out damaging critical evidence for the investigation. Oh my God! The National uh, Transportation Safety Board and the Federal Aviation Administration are doing a probe. Holy crap! Oh wow! I'm seeing a picture of the plane. There ain't much left. Yeah, there's definitely no way anyone would have survived. It couldn't have been very big plane. I don't know why it doesn't say what kind of plane it is or if I'm just missing it. Well, a single engine, so, yeah. Local officials shut down the interstate uh, eastbound on I-40, sifted through the wreckage with some lanes opening for Tuesday morning rush hour. Our, our mayor gave his condolences. So that, that had to be the Costco near me. 
Holy crap balls. Yeah, I never noticed. I haven't heard anything about it, but that did not happen very far from where I am right now. Holy crap. So be careful if you're on a plane. Oh, 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 here's something else that just popped up. Boeing whistleblower dies by suicide amid involvement in a lawsuit against the company. <gasps> A whistleblower who was at war with Boeing died last week. As investigators say, it appears he took his own life. This while he was embroiled in a lawsuit against the company? Hmm. Well, that would seem odd, don't you think? John Barnett was his name. He was discovered dead on Saturday in Charleston, North Carolina, where cops found his body. Uh, he, he was found in his truck in a parking lot hotel, or a, a hotel parking lot. He was suffered by an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. No word on if foul play is, sus is suspected, but the police are investigating. Okay, okay, what? He's, he's going to be suing Boeing and he ends up dead? That's scary. Barnett's attorney, Brian Knowles, said that the passing of his client is tragic, and he went on to express explicit doubt about the circumstances of his death, making sure to call a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the cops are citing as, quote, alleged. What's more startling is Barnett was literally in the midst of a whistleblower lawsuit against Boeing, where he worked for 32 years. He was alleging uh, retaliation for sounding the alarm on what he characterized as cutting corners on assembly lines in their planes. Well, how many stories did I just tell you about Boeing? And now this, I believe, dude was onto something. Uh, gosh, he, and evidently Barnett has been talking about this for a while. He's been going on and on about it. He was uh, recently uh, came to TMZ to address issues that Boeing. 737 MAX aircrafts have been experiencing lately. One incident, you know, like I just said about the door blowing off, that was in uh, January. It left uh, passengers clinging to dear life as they tried to land safely. Can you imagine being in a flight and your door falls off? What the fuck? Things that nightmares are made out of. That's why I drink before I get on a plane. Okay, he was a former quality manager at Boeing, Barnett was, uh, spoke to TMC and said he wasn't surprised by the mishap, ale alleging he'd seen Boeing turn blind eyes to safety concerns for years. He also said the Boeing 737 MAX aircrafts uh, were given the green light to fly again, so as soon after, like, the Alaska incident happened, that's alarming. And they were probably not safe. Fast forward to last week, Barnett was in the middle of, of depositions in his case against Boeing. The company released a statement saying that it was saddened by his death. He was 62. Hmm. That sounds a little... What? I'm not saying Boeing had them killed. I'm totally saying Boeing had them killed. But that is very odd timing, to say the least. Well... Let's just hope we figure out what happened. And again, suicide, never good. Uh, if you watch the show Sister Wives, which I do, that's my guilty little pleasure. I, I hate the show so much, but I can't stop watching. It's a, it's a moving train wreck of terrible. It's about this guy who's got four or had four wives in polygamy and the whole show was supposed to show how amazing polygamy was and you know how it should be decriminalized and legal and blah 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 fast forward to over 10 years later uh three of his wives have left him his son garrison bless his heart took his own life by gun self-inflicted gunshot wound last week man and that's a tough one uh if you if you do know of anyone, I, we all have suicidal thoughts every now and then. They come in and out. That's natural. But if you know that somebody's really struggling, no matter how bad something feels right now, it's temporary. Where suicide's permanent. And I know. I get it. I've had that feeling of just wanting to go to sleep and never wake up. I've had that feeling of like, I just don't care. 
if I live or die. I saw a, me a meme that really hit home with me. It was like the psychiatrist asked the patient, how are you feeling? And the patient said, well, I'm at the point in my life where if I, I'm not worried that if I hang my head up my leg over the bed, that a monster is going to get it. And the psychiatrist was like, damn, yeah, that's, that's kind of how I feel. Like, I, go ahead, monster. I got nothing to lose. It's, we've all been there. Uh, but for some people, especially when you really suffer from depression and anxiety, which I do, which are really fun, and then you throw in seasonal effect disorder, maybe a little bit of bipolar uh, shaking in there, it's a recipe for awesomeness. And I really really would not wish this on anybody it is absolutely horrible thank god i've got drugs to get my brain a little bit more right um yeah if i was going to kill myself right around now i'm pretty much as low as my life has ever been I, and i've had some shitty parts of my life but right now is pretty really shitty but luckily knock wood i have no plans to take my life right now but some people do feel so desperate and so at their end that it seems like the perfect idea for them. So if you know anybody that that sounds like, please talk to them. Please reach out. Even if they say they don't want, invite them to lunch. Bring lunch over to them. Don't be a babysitter. Don't hang over, but let them know you're there and that what, how can you help? And they'll never offer. They'll never ask for help. So you've got to volunteer it. You got to make them want it. All that being said, but if you do know someone, please reach out to Suicide Hotline. I don't have the number in front of me, but I'll pull it up right now. But yeah, if you know somebody, it is it is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. And I know people say that all the time, but it's true. It is very, very true. Uh, and of course, I'm trying to pull it up and I cannot. It is 855-CRISIS-1 if you're in Tennessee. 855 Two seven four seven four seven one, and let me see what else. Uh, do, 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 do. American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. You should. Oh gosh, you can uh, text nine eight eight, or text uh, talk to seven four one seven four one. If you know somebody, if you need uh, to just to talk yourself, you know sometimes just. Having someone to talk to that's not going to judge you or have an opinion about you helps so much. I know that I didn't love therapy, and I I just maybe needed to find the right therapist, but maybe talking to a total stranger is going to be easier than talking to somebody you know. I totally get that and totally, totally empathize. So, well, I hope you've enjoyed this illuminating episode of Laugh or Cry. If you did, please, uh, if you're listening on YouTube, click the subscribe, dig on the little bell. If you're on Spotify, please follow me uh, anywhere else. Thank you for listening. And uh, hopefully uh, we'll hear you, uh, you'll, you'll hear me and we'll talk later on. Have a good night.